Hello, geometry students. Uh, today we're going to be covering the, I think it's unit, yeah, the unit eight activity that talks about um, similar, the that all circles are similar to each other, basically. Um, so let's go ahead and get to that. Um, let me share my screen with you. Okay. So you can go ahead and go to page five on this and, and we'll start from there. And you're gonna need um, this GeoGebra link. So go ahead and click on that. And it should pull up GeoGebra. Hopefully you're familiar at least somewhat with this. Now it says uh, part A, start by creating two different circles. Create a point and label it A to make, a remain, to make the remainder of the activity choose Integers for X and Y coordinates of A. Create a circle with its center at point A and a radius of your choice. To make the remainder of the activity easier, choose an integer value for the radius. Okay, and do the same thing. Okay, so we're gonna create two circles here. And it's basically saying that we want a circle. Um, and we're gonna use two coordinate points that are like um, whole numbers. So I'm gonna do five comma two. Okay, and we want to make the radius of this circle also a whole number. So don't kind of go, don't go between two of these odd lines, go like right at the end. So maybe like this. So now we've created this circle here and it has center at five comma two and it has a radius of one, two, three, four. And let's create another circle in the same way. Here I'll do it at negative three comma four and maybe the radius of this one will be three. Okay, so now we have two circles and take a screenshot and put it in the space below. So we're gonna go ahead and use the snipping tool. Got our screenshot, copy, paste. Well, let me paste. So what we can do is we can save the image. So this capture. And then when we go here, insert image, and go to choose file and capture. And it'll show up just like that. I know this was supposed to be circle A and circle B, um, but we're gonna be using circle A and circle C. Different circles, that's fine, um, but I'm using these circles here. Okay, here's another example you could use. Recall what you know about similarity. If circle B is similar to circle A, what must exist? So if two shapes are similar to each other, then there must exist, a transformation that maps one shape to the other. Um, maybe I should add a little more here. In order for two shapes to be similar, There must exist, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that looks good to me. Next. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. What is the difference of the X coordinates from point A to point B? And again, I'm using point A and point C. So what's the difference if I'm going from point C to point A? What's the difference in the X? So how much am I moving over? So it looks like for on the X, this one, C is at negative three and A is at five. So it'd have to be plus eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the distance here from C to A is a distance of eight horizontally. Um, <clears throat> 
Again, I'm using point C, so, but if you have point B, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna say point B. A. Um, let, me word it, let me word it a little bit different. The distance, um, point B, the horizontal distance, we'll say. Is eight to the right. Now, if you use two different circles, then that'll be different for you. In terms of rigid transformations, reflections, rotations, translations, what does this difference represent? So if you're moving from one circle and you're moving to the right, well, that if you're just moving it over, that's a translation. So this represents a translation of eight to the right. Now, what's the difference between the y-coordinates? So take a look at the y-coordinates. How would I go from C to A? Well, the difference there is 2. It's down 2. You see that? So I answer this one similar to how we did this one, except now it's a vertical distance down 2. So I answer that one, part E. In terms of rigid, rigid transformations, flexions, rotations, translations, what does this difference represent? So again, um, anytime you're shifting it, this represents a translation, once again, of down What's the ratio of the radius of circle A to the radius of circle B? So again, the radius of circle A is 4. And the radius of my circle C or circle B, whatever you want to call it, is 3. So what is the ratio of the radius of circle A to the radius of circle B? Our radi ratio would be 4 to 3. Or in other words, if you want, you can write it as a fraction. Four, two, three. Okay. But write in a complete sentence, right? Like, oh, the ratio of the radius of circle. A to the radius of circle B is 4 to 3. Next, in terms of non-rigid transformation, what does this rate ratio represent? Well, um, when one thing is made bigger than, or made bigger or smaller, but retains the same type of shape, we call that a dilation. So this represents a dilation. Of, if we were going to, um, it depends. If we're going from the smaller circle onto the biggest, then it'll be four. In other words, four thirds. Okay. Our sequence of dilation and translation that maps circle B onto circle A. So it's basically what we've already discussed. So in our case, um, we, I guess I can put it up. I can 
translate circle e eight to the right and two down then violate circle B spelled circle wrong every time circle B by a factor of four thirds. What would that look like? So that's like if I grab this and I move it eight to the oop. move this little circle. But basically we take the smaller circle and if we move it eight to the right, two down, and then dilate by a factor of four thirds, you'll get this circle. And so that shows that those two circles are similar because we found a um, transformation that maps one circle onto the other. So we could say that the two circles are similar. Um, and we could put um, uh, as their this information that maps one circle. So you have established that circles A and B are similar. What conclusion can you make about any two given circles? So we just picked these two circles out of thin air. So any, and really any two circles would be similar to each other. So we can conclude that any two circles will be similar to one another. In other words, all circles are similar to each other. For assurance that similarity proof can be generalized to all circles, try more examples of creating two circles and determining the similarity transformations that map one circle onto the other circle. Take a screenshot of the two circles labeled C and D um, that are different from the ones you created in part A. Um, okay. So here we're gonna make two more circles and again, you can make them however you want. Um, let's do one right here. This one is uh, at nine comma four for its center and a radius of two. And the other one, let's put it why not here? This one will have a radius of we'll put it right here. And this one will do a radius of five, maybe. And let's make it six. Okay. So, but you can make any two circles you want, really. Take a screenshot with the snipping tool. Or whatever screenshot tool you have. Save it, put it onto here. And then write a sequence of dilations and translations that map D onto C. So in other words, how would we map this circle onto this circle? So in this case, we would say, well, we would translate nine to the right and one, two, three, four, five up. And then we would dilate by a factor of one third in this case. 
because we're going from a radius of six to a radius of two. So I want you to explain that here or whatever two circles you chose, or if they're different circles, make sure to explain how to translate and then dilate to go from one circle to the other circle. This is just basically showing what we've already done before. All right, and that's it. Well, that wasn't so bad. So, um, I hope that made sense. Um, if you still need help with this assignment, um, of course, you could always pause, rewind, watch it again. But you could also email me if you want um, help with any of this or anything else in geometry. Uh, my email is ttrigg at ofy.org. That's ttrig at ofy.org. All right. Um, I guess that's it. I'll see you guys next time.